Uh, well, I need gob. Swanee cop. Swanee cop. I like that way better. I like the Swanee cop better than Sawadi cop. Because to the ties, if you say Sawadi cop, you sound like a retard. Swanee cop. All right, January the 15th, which is the day after the 14th and the day before the 16th. You're welcome. I know I'm just a fountain of knowledge. If, and only if, you have sound character, sound, you will find that you generally do not worry about your reputation. AKA, or as we say in Jersey, I don't give a fuck what other people think about me. Hmm. I do not worry about my reputation. I really don't. What? What? What, what should I buy? Um, when those trucks go by with loudspeakers blaring out some crap, that's when I'm actually grateful and happy that I don't speak Thai because I have no idea what the fuck they're saying. They're burning gas. You know, they're paying the people for the use of the truck to go advertise whatever stupid fucking product they can't sell normally. And it really makes me happy that I don't speak Thai. And hell, a lot of the people here, tourists, don't speak Thai. And what's even better, here's where it's, it's even better that these assholes, these fucking jerk-offs who hire these assholes to go around and blast the, the, the advertisements from the, the truck horns, the PA systems, I asked the girls downstairs and uh, meow, what are they saying? They said, I, don't, I don't know, I can't, because it's so um, low quality, lo-fi, that they, the Thai people don't understand what they're selling. <laughs> Yay! So eventually those people will go broke, which is awesome, because that's fucking annoying to drive up and down the streets blasting, you know, buy my mattresses buy my meat, buy my, whatever the fuck they're selling. I don't care, I just wish they would all go away. Um, so eventually they will, they'll go broke because even the Thai people don't understand what the hell they're saying because it's just rah, 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 rah. <laughs> you know, like talking through a bullhorn. You just, you can't hear what the fuck they're saying. So I can't understand it. Most of the expats here can't understand it. So we're not buying anything they're selling. If I did understand it, I would not buy what they're selling because of the way they're advertising. It's, it's intrusive, it's annoying, fuck them. Die, die motherfuckers, die. Anyway, let's get on about Mr. Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson once said that a majority is one man with the courage of his convictions. Okay, if you have the courage that comes from the sincere conviction that you are a person of sound character, an honest, dependable, kind, and caring person, you will never have to worry about what others think of you. That's true. If you know in your own heart that you are a good and decent person, you can meet life's challenges head on and without fear of what others think. Well, well, thank you, Napoleon and Mike and Samuel A. Motherfucking Jackson, or Samuel A. Slipert in this case. Um, I, f I feel validated now. Uh, they, you know, <laughs> they've been they've been pounding away, um, calling me all sorts of names and attacking my my character this month. And and there they just said, you know what, Greg, you're a good person in your core. You're a good person at heart. You've done some bad things, but you did it for the right reasons. Blah 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 blah. Um, I just I just got a pat on the head, a pat on the back, and they just said, it's okay. I'm okay. You're okay. Um, I gotta learn to be a liberal snowflake. Oh no, I don't. I don't live in America anymore. Thank God, because it'd be hard to be a liberal snowflake. I just don't think that way. Um, what do I mean by that? Like, why am I such an asshole when it comes to leftists and liberals and socialists? Well, number one, if you've traveled as much as I have, you know that the socialist and, and worst communist countries. I mean, it, nobody studies history anymore. Like, nobody remembers what it was like in the Soviet Union. And maybe I have a little bit more insight because I dated that woman, uh, Alex, and she was from the Soviet Union, you know, pre-wall coming down and all that, glass-nosed and all that crap. Um, she remembers standing in line an hour for a liter, one liter of milk. Um, and that she would bring to her sister who had a baby at the time 
uh, and or her mother. <laughs> like she would stand in line for an hour to get milk, one liter of milk, not a gallon of milk, uh, for her family, not even for her, because she was a single well, a lady at that point. That's communism, guys. <laughs> that's how it works. The poor have nothing and the rich have everything. And that's what you all are voting for and rooting for. And you're so short that it's going to save the world and right all the wrongs and all that. And just like, how could you not learn from history? How can you not look at a, a, a country like Venezuela? And look what happened with the, the socialist regime there. Uh, Korea where when you see the behind the thing, the scene things, which is very hard to see because the government controls everything, which is what will happen in America over the next four to 10 years. We'll see how long it takes, but the government will control everything. You have half a nation applauding, kicking Orange Man off of Twitter, and they're just not getting that kicking anybody off of anything is not the American way. If you don't like Trump's tweets, Go past them. Scroll. Use your finger. Oh, no, no, no. Orange man bad. Take him off. Kick him off the platform. <laughs> How weak is Snowflake? You want to know what I mean by Snowflake? That's what I mean. Like, oh, it's, I can't see it. Uh, if I go to the supermarket and I see a black woman uh, on, on, a, uh, on a syrup bottle, that offends me. We must remove that label. What the fuck is wrong with you? Are you really that pathetic? Are you really that small? Are you really that weak? Yeah, you are. <laughs> Snowflake. Um, so a quick example here in, in Lovely Little Pie, which is filled with snowflakes. Right, this is the, uh, oh, Sawadee. Yeah. Close the door, right, because you were naked. <sighs> come and say now it's cold and come and. Now, uh -huh. now, uh -huh. hello. Hello, video. Oh, well, she's wet. The towel's wet. And the whole thing is shaking now, like an earthquake. And she's only 90 pounds. These floors suck. So here in lovely snowflake pie, where everybody's enlightened, and they come for the vibe, and they have circles where they sit around and chant and shit. Yeah, just, you know, as you can imagine, I fit in. It fit me like a glove here. Um, there's a guy named Pete. Never met, not met him. Just I've seen him on social media because I haven't been kicked off yet but it will come because of my beliefs and you're okay with that because my beliefs don't match your beliefs so I should be kicked off right anyway cancel culture right that's the word for it cancel culture yeah I don't like it ban it how about you just ignore it no no no, no. and and what's really chaps my ass is that children uh, specifically children who are involved in trafficking and sex because there's a lot of sick fucks in the world. Um, there's a really good thing on Netflix you all need to watch called The Social Dilemma. And in it, they talk about kids and how they're addicted to their phones. So if you're a parent, that's like mandatory viewing. But even if you're not, they put out some very disturbing statistics about um, how many children are exposed to pornography because of their phone and the, the internet, social media. So here you have Captain Jack, Jackoff, from Twitter banning not only Trump. See, here's the thing too, orange man bad. So it's an emotional thing, I got you. You hate Trump, so you're happy to see him off Twitter. You, you can't just scroll past. It's, it's physically impossible for you to scroll past or not look at his feed. You have to see it, right? Okay. So he bans Trump. Well, he, he also bans like James Woods, the actor, right? Now he's conservative. He supports Trump. Good. Kick him off too. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? It's a slippery fucking slope, my friends. And, and you don't care because you hate Trump so much. They really got you so torqued up emotionally that you know, whatever's bad for Trump, you're for. Even if what they're doing goes against everything you believe in, which is freedom, freedom of, of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of everything. I mean, that's what America used to stand for, was freedom. Now it stands for, if you're a socialist, lefty snowflake, then everything you believe is cool, but everything else has got to go. Um, I see on Twitter a lot of um, socialists or lefties or liberal would posting, let's hunt down the people who supported Trump. Hunt down? Excuse me? 
the fuck is that? Trump and his people are gun-toting, tobacco-chewing, God-fearing radicals, right? Now you want to hunt them down? Isn't that what they're supposed to say? Oh, no, but it's okay because it's against Trump, you see? So that makes it all right. Everything's all right if it's against Trump because orange man bad. The fuck? And, and I've heard it more than once, MAGA referred to as a cult. And that might be true. It, it, it seems cult-like. He seems like a godlike figure and they're following him. But what the fuck is all this shit on Twitter I see where the lefties are like, punish them, hunt them down, kill them, you know? Everybody who voted not to impeach Trump needs it. I mean, what? What? Unity? Hello? Unity? Oh, kumbaya. We love each other. <laughs> Unity? <laughs> you want to talk about unity and, and I see more than one tweet of people like, hunt the fuckers down. <laughs> Y'all have lost your minds. Anyway, here in Pi, uh, stay focused. There's a guy named Pete. Never met him. I've just seen him on social media. For now, till I give it up or get kicked off, whichever happens first. And um, Pete runs an animal rescue, right? And I talked about Fang, my boy, and how I feel sorry for him, and I wish I could take him in, but it's just not practical. Uh, we were doing our walk last night, like we always do, doing our circuit around Walking Street. It was quiet. It was dead. A lot of stores, even the popular ones that are normally busy, were closed. You know, COVID. COVID's killing what little spark in life this town had. Well, not once again, not COVID. COVID's been here since March. The government decides when we're locked down and when we're not. And we're not in a lockdown, but people, some provinces, some areas of Bangkok, nine hours away are, and that's enough for everything just to die here. It's crazy. It's crazy the power that, that the politicians use because of a virus, which has been here since March or before March, but March is when the lockdown started last year, right? So it's almost a year in. And all through the summer and, and October, November, December, really nothing. Now it's like a thing again. It's in the news. It's in front of you. It's They're pounding it into you. They've done selective lockdowns, and everybody's afraid. Why are they afraid? Because they're fucking snowflakes. They have no sustenance. They have no guts. They have no courage. So they're afraid of, you know, boo, oh, oh, you know, whatever. So animals are a problem here. This is my point with Fang, and you know he's a street dog. Oh, so we were doing our walk last night, so real quick, and a dog came out from a restaurant and started barking. Now she's afraid of dogs. Remember I said she doesn't like dogs. Well, last night I found out why she doesn't like dogs. She was deathly afraid, and she showed fear. If you know anything about pack animals, the last thing you fucking do is show fear. So I just stopped her, right, from moving. Just held her, grabbed her hand, and hold her. And I looked at the dog, no, you know, and he backed off and he backed away. And we kept walking, but she felt fear and she was like shaking from the dog. The dog scared her, right? So the dog comes back around, you know, because it sensed fear. It's pack animals or they want to dominate. And she didn't know how to behave around a, a uh, aggressive dog, which is to show that you're the alpha male, right? So like three times the dog came out after, three times I had to back it off, you know, and just stand her still, don't move, don't be afraid. I, tried, I said, don't be afraid in English, but her English isn't to the level where she understood what I was saying. She was afraid and she was radiating fear and that's what an alpha male dog, street dog is gonna play on. He wanted to show this is his territory and how dare we walk through. Keep in mind, we walked that thing almost every night, right? This is the first time we've seen that dog. He was big, tan and um, the guys who are, nobody really owns this. It's like Fang hangs out here. I guess he hangs out there. Um, and, the, and the owners came out and they were really talking to him in Thai, but he sensed fear, she's little. I mean, he, was, he was after her ass, he didn't bite her. I kept him away with the finger and the no, you know, the stern tone and giving him commands, like back the fuck off, right? <laughs> this is my bitch. <laughs> Hey, they're dogs, you know? I mean, you gotta act like a fucking animal around an animal, right? So it worked and I, he didn't bite her, but she was scared shitless. So that's a, a good example of the, uh, number one, the fear. She's just afraid of COVID. She, again, last night, I mentioned this in videos before she turned to me in bed and said, do you, are you sick? Do you have COVID? She just got sick two days ago. She had a cough and <laughs> so she gets sick 
it's got to be the 12th or 14th time she's been sick since we've been together. I've been sick, I mean, cold, flu, snotty, sore throat, sick, zero times. Headache, any of that crap. COVID type stuff, right? Sick, sick. Pneumonia, sick. Flu, sick. Zero times since I've been here in March because I, I never get sick. The only time I've been sick, twice now, and this was new for me. This is just recently this has happened. I hadn't been sick like this in 20, 30 years since I drank too much alcohol one day was I got food poisoning twice, right? This uh, late last year, I got food poisoning twice. The, the rubbery chicken and the um, mashed potatoes left over from Thanksgiving with the butter and the milk that I made, my own cooking made me sick. That's it. That's the only time I don't have headache, I don't have fever, I don't have cough, I don't catch cold. It's 59 degrees and I'm same, same as always. I'm shirtless in Seattle. So, and she's in her flannel jammies and she has a sweater over her shirt. She's cold, 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 cold. You heard her when she came up from her shower. Now, now, which means cold. So anyhow, um, Pete, is a kind soul, a good-hearted person. He cares about animals, which, you know, to me is a quality person if you care about animals. And he takes dogs in, you know, off the street and stuff, and people bring them and drop them off. He's, he's like the uh, shelter or the pound of the ASPCA, but he doesn't destroy the dogs like they do eventually if they can't rent them out for money and get donations, right? Because everything in America is about money. So... The people here who are, by and large, liberal snowflakes, there's some, of course, who are not, and you know, they pipe up on social media from time to time, but they're outnumbered, so mostly they keep quiet and stay in the background. Uh, I have a business, so the last thing I, I want to do is post in social media and say, grow the fuck up, or grow a spine, or get a backbone, because that's just not popular here, and it would hurt the business more than it's already limping along. So I don't say anything. I keep my fucking mouth shut. Um, so they're, they're big with the, like, you know, help the dogs and feed the dogs. And the, but what they do is they all take them to Pete. See, as long as somebody else solves the problem, they're okay. They're, they're happy. The, the liberal stuff, like, I love dogs. We'll do what Pete does. Well, no, but I'll bring it to Pete. Thank God for Pete. Oh, Pete's great. Yeah, Pete is great. What are you doing? Oh, I'm bringing it to Pete. And I'm, I'm enlightened. And I'm not evil like the orange man or his followers, right? The MAGA, the Trump. I'm not evil like them because I bring the dog to Pete. Well, no, Pete's the fucking <laughs> magical. Pete's the one who's sacrificing. You're not. But you, you, they feel better about themselves, right? Style over substance. If you just think of that phrase that describes a whole lot of people uh, in that left socialist regime. Style over substance. Because I say I care about the dog, but all I'm doing is picking him up and dropping him off at some other dude's place and making it his problem, making him feed the dog, making him take care of the dog, making him deflee it and bath it and bathe it and all that. But their conscience is, I'm a good person. I brought the dog to Pete. Well, yeah, you didn't kill the dog or run it over. I get it, but you're not doing what Pete's doing, right? It, the world needs more Pete's and less socialists who are like feeling good about themselves because they brought a stray dog to Pete, right? See the difference? They're one level removed. Six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Great game. Play it at your next party. Oh, we can't have parties. Lockdown. Just deal with it. Just take what the government gives you because you like it. If you were in prison, you would be a bitch. You would take it up the ass because you just accept everything. No bueno. All right, we're coming up on 20 minutes. Everybody loves 20 minute videos and tunes out after three or four. So nobody will watch this and that's cool. But I, I feel cleansed.